um, that viruses uh, where in the world they came from. We don't know, <coughs> but one thing we know for sure, viruses, they are, uh, they, without another cell, viruses will not survive. If you take a virus and put it on the table or put it on a doorknob, they will survive temporarily for a little short while. But if those are from the doorknob, from the door handle, is not picked up and put it into another cell, they will die. Time will kill them. Am I making some sense, everybody? So viruses, they need some other cells life. I hope I'm making some sense. All viruses, there's no exception. I don't know. And we have to look up, Google it, see what, I doubt that any of them last more than a few, uh, a few hours. A day, maximum I would guess, I'm guessing a day. It's not like the eggs of some parasites, they can stay around for thousands of years. When you take zoology, we'll talk about that. The eggs of roundworms, they can stick, they can stick around for thousands of years. But these guys, eh, a day, two, so maximum. If you don't live by the, you not get viruses? We cannot get uh, viruses. You do, not touch, you do not eat anything, do not drink, drink anything, do not live by anybody, you will not get any viruses. You will not get cancer. You will not get, get sick. But you need to drink, is that right? You need yeah. to eat. Exercise, yes, that's of course. Touch the door handle. When you go on exercise machine, you're holding the door of the knobs. Oh, sorry. A virus is an infectious particle consisting of genes packaged in a protein coat. Well, your textbook is being funny, but when I took zoology, uh, I say zoology, when I took virology, the virology professor said viruses, really, there is no good definition for them because they're so different. Viruses are so different that there is no good definition for them. This is not bad because we have uh, prions that are they, they're just protein codes. But this is possibly, yes, this would be the best definition you can get. But viruses are viruses. Viruses are much simpler in structure than even a prokaryotic cells. They're smaller and simpler than prokaryotic cells. You remember all semester long, you had to know the difference even for lab practical here. You had to know the difference between prokaryote and eukaryote. Here we are seeing another form of not living, viruses are not living organisms. Another form of package of uh, uh, inherited material which is simpler than uh, prokaryote. Viruses cannot reproduce or carry out metabolism outside of a host cell not have metabolism. First virus that was discovered in 1800, in 1800 was tobacco mosaic uh, virus. Uh, what they've done, they knew, they knew there is, they knew there is a virus on tobacco leaves. So what they've done in back in 1800, they took the tobacco leaves and they grind it and they siphoned, they sucked everything out, and they took this uh, top layer and dropped it on another tobacco leaf. And when they rubbed it on another tobacco leaf, and it became infected again. So they knew, and on the, during this time, microscope was around. They could see micro, microbes on the uh, microscopes, and they uh, did not see any microbes on the microscopes. So they said, well, what is this that is causing uh, this uh, disease in tobacco, they call it virus. And that was the first time virus came about. Virus structures, usually they have a protein code outside. This is a phage. You know about this one before. And then inside of the protein code, most of them have a DNA or RNA material. And then, of course, this one has the tail. It has a, a tail sheath, tail fiber. And this is the phage or phage, uh, which is, infects the bacteria. This is a picture of uh, a diagram, uh, not real picture, of tobacco mosaic. Protein molecules outside, RNA inside. This is a phage that infects bacteria. Protein outside, DNA inside. And this is HIV. 
HIV, you have, and I will talk about the structure of it here, you have protein and glycoproteins here, and inside you only have RNA. You have RNA. That's HIV. Okay, viral genomes, uh, the genome uh, may consist of either double-stranded uh, or single double uh, or single stranded RNA or double stranded single stranded uh, DNA depending on the uh, depending on the type of nucleic acid the virus is called a DNA virus or RNA virus. The genome is either a single linear or circular uh, molecule that uh, nu uh, nucleic acids. Viruses have uh, between three and several thousand genes in their genomes. Between three to several thousands genes in their genomes. So uh, they are relatively, uh, a capsid, the definition of it, it's a bold, guys, a capsid is a protein that shell that enclosed the viral genome. Capsids are built from protein uh, subunits called uh, capsomeres. A capsid can have a variety of structures. Here they are, a variety of structure of capsids. As I said, this is mosaic, uh, tobacco mosaic. Uh, this is adenovirus. Uh, this is influenza virus, and this is a bacteriophage. So they all have different shapes. Viruses come in different shapes. Some viruses have accessory structures that are called, uh, that helps them to infect host cells. Viral envelope envelopes envelopes are different than capsids. The envelopes are uh, different than capsids derived from membrane of the host cell surrounded the capsids of. Uh, influenza virus and uh, many other viruses found in animals. Viral envelopes contain a combination of viral and host cells um, memory. So here is a virus. It uh, comes inside of the cell, infects inside of the cell. Here is a viral, uh, the protein molecule. Here is a viral DNA. And what will happen, the virus DNA can impregnate itself to the DNA of the host cell and of course multiply uses all of the machinery of the host cell and multiply itself and of course it makes RNA this RNA will make the virus protein molecules this RNA is making because this RNA came from that DNA you all know the, you all know the RNA DNA relationship this transcription is coming from there and then right here then all of these protein molecules come together with the DNA, they come together and they leave the cell. Now, if they leave the host cell, they have a membrane of the host cell around them, that's then their envelope. If they have just the protein of the virus, then it's called capsid. So there is a fine line difference between capsid and envelope. The envelope is coming from the membrane of the host cell and then the capsid is the protein molecule which the virus was born with. Okay. Here is a video. Everything I said is gonna is going to be a, a virus video. is an intracellular parasite that can reproduce only by taking over a host cell. A virus consists of a nucleic acid genome enclosed in a protein shell called a capsid. In the virus shown here, the genome consists of DNA, but some viruses have RNA. Some viruses are also covered by a membranous envelope that is derived from the membrane of the host cell. There is usually a lock and key fit between the proteins of the capsid and receptors on a particular type of host cell. That's right. The virus attaches to a host cell, and viral DNA enters the cell. The viral DNA uses nucleotides and enzymes of the host cell to replicate itself. The viral DNA then commandeers other host cell materials and machinery to transcribe its genes into messenger RNA and translate the RNA message into capsid proteins. Viral DNA and capsid proteins then assemble into new viruses. Mature viruses leave the host cell, often destroying the cell in the process. The viruses can go on to infect other cells, spreading the viral infection. Okay, did you uh, hear what he said about the virus? And this is the virus, this is the host cell. They must 
have a lock and key, they have, must match. The virus protein molecules must match the receptor of the host cell. Did you hear that? Let's take an example. HIV. HIV virus does not infect your liver cells, does not infect your brain cells. It only infect your white blood cells. So the molecules of the virus, HIV, and your white blood cells, they can form a lock and key, which we talked about at the beginning of semester during uh, membrane, uh, during membrane chapter. He mentioned that here, if you were not sleeping. Okay, so he mentioned, watch it again. The lytic cycle, it means the whole cell will die. That's what the lytic cycle means. The lytic cycle is a, uh, uh, is a fudge, he's talking about fudge, but in general, in general, lytic cycle, it means the whole cell fudge. Replicative cycle that uh, culminates in the death of the whole cell. <laughs> a fudge that reproduced only by the lytic cycle is called a virulent fudge. It means a virulent virus is a virus that kills the host cell. Amir, is there any place that the virus will not kiss the, uh, kill the whole cell? Yes, there are cases, and HIV is one of them, and I will talk about that in a minute. Okay, so what will happen, or uh, a fudge that, rep uh, that reproduce only by the lytic cycle is called a, a virulent fudge. A, bac a bacteria have, defense, uh, have defenses against fudge, including restriction enzymes that recognize and cut up. You already know about restriction enzymes. We use it in the lab to cut up DNA. But uh, bacteria have restriction enzymes, and the restriction enzymes we use in the lab, it came from bacteria. Okay, so they have restriction enzymes to cut up uh, the, uh, the DNA of the fudge. And when the DNA of the fudge is uh, broken down, then the fudge cannot multiply, so the bacteria will survive. Here it is, the lytic cycle. Uh, the fudge attaches to, please, no, I think this is another one, attachment, attaches to the bacteria, and then it transmits its DNA into the bacteria. In the bacteria, it gets multiplied. It uses all of the machinery, all of the ribosomes, and all of the protein molecules, all of the enzymes inside of the bacteria is used by the DNA. So then the protein molecules, the pieces and bits, of the virus multiply, multiply, they are assembled together, and voila, they get outside of, they get out of the bacteria, and then the bacteria dies. And that is called a lytic cycle. Lytic, on your prefixes and suffixes, a lice, it means what? Remember that? Some of you missed it in the last exam. You thought I would not ask you prefix, suffix, but I did. What does lice mean? Break down. Lice, it means L-Y-S-E in your uh, prefix suffixes. This is the lytic cycle it caused the cells, the host cell to die. <clears throat> lytic cycle. Bacteriophages, or phages, are viruses that infect bacteria. This is a T4 phage, which consists of DNA inside a protein coat. The lytic cycle begins when the tail fibers of the phage stick to receptor sites on the surface of a host bacterium, such as E. coli. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell, leaving the empty protein coat outside. The DNA of the host cell is destroyed, and host cell enzymes and nucleotides are commandeered to replicate the phage DNA, making more phage DNA. The host cell's enzymes and ribosomes transcribe the phage genes and translate them into phage proteins. Phage parts accumulate and assemble to form phages. A phage enzyme digests the bacterial cell wall and the cell ruptures or lysis. As many as 200 phages spill out. Each of them may go on to infect another cell. This diagram summarizes the lytic cycle of bacteriophage T4. Lytic cycle, it means the bacteria will die. Okay. Uh, the lysogenic cycle, on the other hand, the host cell will not die. The host cell will not die. The lysogenic cycle replicates the phage genome without destroying the host cell. Uh, this integrated with viral DNA is known as a prophage. 
right here is a lysogenic cycle. In contrast to the lytic cycle, the lysogenic cycle reproduces the viral genetic material without destroying the host. The lysogenic cycle of phage lambda begins when a phage binds to the surface of a host bacterium. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell, leaving the empty protein coat outside. The viral DNA is incorporated into the host cell DNA, where it is called a prophage. Every time the host bacterium reproduces, it replicates the phage DNA along with its own and passes the copies on to daughter cells. Occasionally, the phage DNA exits the bacterial chromosome and initiates a lytic cycle. The viral DNA takes over the metabolic machinery of the host cell to make phage DNA and proteins. The host cell lyses, releasing phages which can infect other cells. Okay. This diagram summarizes the lysogenic and lytic cycles of phage lambda. Lytic, lysogenic. This is a lysogenic cycle and this is the lytic cycle. And in the early days of, uh, of biotechnology, they used these uh, lambda uh, phage to incorporate human uh, gene into the bacteria and bacteria will make, uh, for example, insulin or growth hormone or whatever we wanted. Whatever we wanted to duplicate, we use these vectors. They call them vectors sometimes <coughs> to transmit the DNA, the desired DNA to bacteria. When the bacteria multiply, then the desired DNA is multiplied. Okay, that's what they've done in the past. But uh, nowadays, it's less of that. They use other things. Here is, again, another diagram I'm showing you that <coughs> describes the difference between lytic pathway and lysogenic pathway. Lysogenic pathway uh, is the pathway that the host cell will not die. The host cell multiply and multiply and multiply. So the genome of the virus is multiplying as well. Okay, here, then sometimes this pathway, the lysogenic pathway, enter into lytic pathway, which the host cell will die right here. And of course, the phage will come out and infect Cell. I hope I'm making some sense. They said uh, the li uh, li lytic pathway and lysogenic pathway, sometimes they are together, sometimes like uh, that one, T4, you remember that it kills the bacteria, it does not go through uh, uh, lysogenic pathway. Here are, again, I do not expect you to know, here's a table of uh, viruses what they have already gave you that information, already gave you this information. Uh, but if, if you, any time you want to identify what viruses are doing what, and what, how do they belong, what do they do, this gives you a little bit of more uh, detail than you hear in the news. So we have viruses that are double-stranded, DNA, already said that. We have viruses that are single-stranded DNA, Okay, then we have double-stranded RNA viruses. And then we have single-stranded RNA viruses. And then uh, we have, um, serves as a template for mRNA synthesis. We have RNA that, uh, that serves as a template for mRNA. And then we have serves as a template for DNA synthesis, which is HIV. HIV is one of them. Okay, if we, uh, um, did, uh, what I what I what I like you to know are these headings. Okay, it serves as a, a template for mRNA, serves as a template for DNA, and then of course you have single-stranded RNA, double-stranded RNA, single-stranded DNA, and uh, double-stranded DNA. Do you know what I mean by those? Do that do those two tables make sense? Again. Do not worry about the information here. Do they have envelope or not? Uh, what kind of diseases they cause or not? Do not worry about that, except HIV. I put it in a red bold that you should know HIV serves as a template for DNA synthesis. That's what I'm gonna talk about next. RNA as viral genetic material. And the broadest variety of RNA genome is found in viruses that infect animals, 
retrovirus use reverse transcriptase, ASE at the end of the word means what? <coughs> Enzyme, okay? Uh, to copy their RNA genome into RNA. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, that's HIV stands for human HI immunodeficiency and V for virus. That's what, if you are wondering what does HIV stands for, that's what HIV stands for. Why they call it HIV? Because of <coughs> human immunodeficiency virus. It's the retrovirus, you should know, it's a retrovirus that causes AIDS acquired, and what is the abbreviation of AIDS? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So AIDS is when your immune system is not functioning. That's pretty much what it is. And the virus attacks your white blood cells. It does not attack your liver cells. It does not attack brain cells. Why people of HIV die? Because of they become infected with something else. The common cold that you and I get over it, they die of it because they do not have an immune system to fight it. Okay? And that's what that's what that means. Acquired immunodeficiency. Immunodeficiency syndrome. Anyhow, uh, viruses, uh, viruses have different structures. Not all are alike. Uh, some viruses have only RNA and some have only uh, DNA, but not both. We do not, we do not have, if you go to those tables, if you go to that table that I showed you, you will not find any virus that have both DNA and RNA. They do not have. We do not have a virus that have both DNA and RNA. Okay. Prions are protein particles. That's what prions are. Prions are protein particles that they act like viruses. They destroy cells. And one of them that you're probably familiar with is a mad cow disease. Mad cow disease is caused by prions. Okay. So, and then uh, viroids are uh, strands of circular RNA, not DNA. This is RNA, sorry. Let's change that right now. I don't know how that happened. Probably Reno sabotaged it. Okay, viroids are strands of circular RNA that infects plant cells only. Plant cells only. Prions infects animal cells only. So prions are found in animal cells and a viroids is found in plant. How viruses reproduce by leading and lysogenic cycle. And here is HIV, the structure of HIV that you should know a little bit. So you do have the glyco, uh, glycoproteins. These are the glycoproteins. Here is a viral envelope, the envelope uh, that comes from the host membrane, uh, the host cells membrane. We talked about it. Then you have capsid, the protein molecules that HIV was born with. And then now you have the RNA. This is an RNA. This is an RNA. And then you have this enzyme, which is called reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase, what does it do? What do you think it will do, reverse transcriptase? Oh, anybody? <coughs> reverse of transcription. Very good. Reverse of transcription is reverse transcription. <laughs> Which you have RNA, and RNA, then DNA is, based, is made based on the RNA. DNA is made, made based on RNA. So far, whatever you learned, we talked about that DNA is the template for RNA. RNA is made, made based on DNA. This is opposite of it. This is opposite of it. This is, you have RNA and DNA is being made based on it. Here it is. So, HIV, Finds a host cell, the host cell, the host cell is usually our white blood cell. And then HIV gets inside and what happens? Dismantle. When it dismantled, you have the RNA, 
RNA uses is reverse transcriptase, and based on that RNA, DNA is being synthesized. The blue is DNA, the red is RNA. Then DNA is doubled, that DNA goes into the nucleus of the whole cell and implement, it inserts itself inside of the DNA of the host cell. And based on, that, based on that DNA, that cell is multiplying, of course the white blood cells do not multiply, but uh, when they are in, inside, of our, uh, inside of our system, but that cell will not die yet. Look at the white blood cell, still healthy. And then RNA is synthesized. Based on that DNA, the RNA is synthesized. RNA comes out of nucleus, goes to the cytoplasm, with help of ribosome and other enzymes, pieces and bits, the envelope, not the envelope, I'm sorry, the capsid is made, the enzyme is made, and then of course, when the virus is ready to leave, the host cell is an envelope outside of a tube. This is a masterpiece. Whoever thought of this was brilliant. I don't know who it was, US Army, Brilliant. There are theories where, where, where HIV came from. HIV, the theories that where HIV came from, uh, the most accepted ones is from uh, uh, rhesus monkeys in Africa. Somewhere in there, uh, when we are deforesting the forests in Africa, and that's how it came about. That's the most accepted theory, if you look at it. <coughs> you read. What do you think? You read it. I don't know. I guess I have to go with Reese's Monkey from Africa. There's different theories. Here it is again. Another shot at uh, life, the structure of HIV and uh, the host cell. Uh, vaccines are harmless uh, derivatives of pathogenic microbes that stimulate the immune system to mount defense against the harmful pathogens. Uh, vaccines can, uh, uh, what vaccines are, uh, pretty much they, they modify the virus a little bit, they heat kill it or modify it a little bit, and they put that virus inside of us, and then we make antibodies, and our immune system works against them, and then next time when we come across that virus, the exact the pathogenic virus, then our immune system comes and destroy them. Uh, that's what, um, that's in case of viruses, and some bacteria are also, we have vaccines. But we do not have vaccines for any eukaryotic cell. They're working for malaria very hard. They're working to come up with a vaccine for malaria, but still, for any eukaryotic cell, we do not have a vaccine. We have vaccine for some, vi some viruses and some microbes, uh, bacteria, some bacteria. Anyhow, uh, vaccines can prevent certain viral illnesses. Uh, viral infections cannot be treated by antibiotics. If you have a viral infection, you go to doctor, doctor, I want antibody or a doctor gives you antibody, they are doing you a disservice. They are harming you more. So you have viral infection, you should not take antibody. And then antiviral drugs can help to treat some of them, though not cure vi uh, viral infections. And then finally, uh, your textbook did not give you this term, I am giving it to you, interferons. Interferons are molecules that your white blood cells, your immune system makes to fight viruses. And now uh, drug companies are working to make interferons that when you come across a uh, viral infection, they give you an injection of interferons. But again, that's interferons right now naturally being made in your body to infect, uh, to uh, fight viruses. Yes? That's my definition, I hear it. It's when our immune system, our immune system making molecules to fight viruses. It's called interferons. Those molecules, protein molecules or other molecules, 
uh, that our body makes for viruses is called interferons. You said those were uh, white blood cells? Our white blood cells, our immune system. The immune system is not just your white blood cells, it's a whole uh, set of different things. Uh, viroids and prions, the simplest infectious agent. The viroids are small circular RNA uh, molecules that infect plants and uh, disrupts their growth. Prions are slow acting. I already talked about all of this. Virtually indescribable infectious proteins that cause brain disease in mammals. Prions uh, pro uh, uh, propagate by converting normal proteins into the pro, uh, prions uh, versions. Um, Scarpy uh, in sheep, mad cow disease, and uh, Christoph uh, Jacob disease in human are all caused by prions. Here is a diagram showing you what you have a prion, and these are the normal protein in the host cell. This is the host cell, the normal protein molecules. What happens, prions turn the normal protein molecules in the host cells into prions. And pretty soon the cell becomes full of prions and the host will die. Okay, that's, that's the cause um, you've heard about mad cow disease. So um, this is what happens. The exact mechanism, a mere of uh, prion makes normal cells a prion make them as the normal cells uh, new prions they make them the mechanism still we don't know what so they're working on how do they make the normal protein molecules to uh, prions the prions make it and of course they do not have any the prions do not have any uh, DNA they do not have any DNA or RNA prions are just protein molecules Where did they come from? Your guess is as good as mine. What do you mean? Originally, where did they come from? Like viruses? Or you're asking if, if you, that's why they say you should not eat cow um, brain. In some countries, they eat cow, sheep, brain, uh, not cooked. You should not do that. Then that's how you get bad cow disease or yeah. you come in contact with them, not just by eating. If they have an infected cow, you go ahead and uh, try to, do, especially veterinarians, try to treat them, and they do not wash their hands, they do not to take the precautions, and they can become infected. That's how we humans become infected, if that's what. But originally, where did they come from? Yes. Just yeah. like viruses. We do not have a, we don't know where viruses come from. Well, there are theories where viruses come from. Viruses come from pieces and bits of um, cells, prokaryotic cells, possibly. So it wasn't viruses, then cells. It was cells, then viruses. Yes? You said uh, they cause brain disease in animals, so brain cells, Mad cow disease. I gave, you, I gave you a list of them. Man cow disease. Did you watch Man vs. Wild? Man vs. what? Wild. Wallace? Wallace? Wild. No. Oh. Is it a movie? Or is it no. a documentary? It's a show. He eats all kinds of raw stuff on there. Like camels and... I don't know. I, I, I yeah. do not have TV. We, we do have a screen, but we don't have any cable or uh, any antenna. It's on YouTube. Okay, give me five, ten minutes. I need a break, and then we'll go over evolution, and then I'll return your stuff. Evolution. Is that chapter 21, evolution? Um, just a few, a few slides. Slides of it, not the whole entire So, 18, 19, and 20. Something like that, yes. Our final. Yes. Oh. <coughs> Chapter 